gentlemen, uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to uh, thank all uh, those who have traveled across uh, to come to our little city uh, to officially welcome you to, to Dubai. And uh, I would like to say that we are honored that your uh, gathering, your conference is, is in this city. Uh, but at the same time, uh, on behalf of the company, uh, Myself and, and Mark, we're really honored to be able to come and join you today and, and, and talk to you a little bit about, not only about what we've done, but most importantly, to share with you our mistakes, because I think that's where value is. Um, you know, many people talk about, you know, human achievement and, and you know, people's ability and people's dream uh, to achieve and, and move on, but I, you know, it's, I mean, you know, everybody dreams, and you know, many of us dream at night too. A lot of dreaming that goes on at night. Um, but you know, a friend of mine, uh, in fact, a Canadian like you, Mark, uh, uh, sent me a note uh, once from Ottawa. Uh, he said, Muhammad, I'm, I'm reading this book, and, and it and talks about daydreamers. And he said, uh, in fact, it's George Gore. And he says, you know, Muhammad, the, the difference between daydreamers and people who dream at night is that people who dream at night, they can barely remember by the time they wake up what was the dream. And people who dream at night, they dream, or they dream they are very dangerous people because these, these guys dream about it during the day and they plan that they're going to do something about it. So the difference between dreams and, and reality is that, you know, the ability to execute and the ability to execute, and many of you know that, is that, you know, are you daring enough to execute? And are you daring enough to take mistakes if anything goes wrong? Of course, you have to be at the right place. You have to have the right support. You have to be lucky. God has to be with you. Your mother has to pray for you. It's all the combinations of all this on top of your hard work and being gutsy and, and so forth. But for us, I think more important than any of that to be very honest with you, is that how lucky are we to be able to do what we do? And myself, I really think that I'm blessed to be able to participate and do the work and the type of work we do and learn and participate with, with, with my colleagues in the company, outside the company, to be able to achieve some of the work we do. And I think, you know, we got to, to a point also because we, we really try to look at at the region and, and look at opportunities and think big of them that you know the first thing when I sat this morning here uh, the first thing Mark said because I just came this morning from our office in Cairo and I think he received an email and he said what have you done to these guys last night and you know because they were planning to do phase one of one development we have it's about 60 million square feet site and you know they're doing their first I don't know 400 homes I don't know 500 homes I said, why 500? <laughs> These are developing markets. Nobody have ever developed. Nobody. Nobody have ever developed properly, professionally, and respect the human life. What's human life? It's the school, it's the park, it's the amenities that exist in these developments. The Middle East, all of it. So I said, you know, go three times. The market is hungry. In fact, Egypt, we have a problem in Egypt that customers are waiting for the next launch. So that, that tells you a little bit about what's, why, why we are ambitious, because we have opportunities in this region. Coming back to, to, the, to the building and come back to, to tall buildings, I think when we started the actual design of this building, you know, the Middle East, the, the Middle East and the whole world was just recovering from the 9-11 uh, unfortunate uh, events. But you know, do, at, that, at those moments, do you have really the, the energy and the heart to say the world will move on? Do you have that ability to think that way? Or do you think that it is 9-11 and that is the end of the world? No way. I don't think my kids want me to think that way. I don't think your kids would like to think that way. So actually when we started the design, we were a bit, you know, a lot of talk was going on and then we start, you know, reading that it's becoming fashionable now to, to uh, to go uh, taller. So the, the idea of putting the building in, I think to begin with is really to, we want the world to recognize that our hometown, this little city, 
is arriving to the, to the global scene. And it's not difficult to do. We have the best talent available here. We have the best talent from all over the world. I would like to collaborate uh, with them and get it done. But the challenge was dealing with His Highness because you know, there is a site that we, with, that we wanted to swap with the government and we are trying to come up with a creative idea and we did this 90 story building and, and he said, you know, this meeting is over. You know, I'm not, I'm like, no, don't trade for you for 90 story building. Get something bigger, so we get something tall. And he said, how tall is this compared to the tallest? And I think, the, I think we, we did something like almost as close as, uh, until we did close to what, 40, 50% taller, he said, well, yeah, we can do the swap now. So uh, I'm dealing with, with a man, <laughs> I'm dealing with a man who have ambitions and he believes in no limits in, in what a human can do. And it is true, human achievements in, in aviation, in, in, in buildings, in agriculture, in, in, in healthcare is, is amazing. So therefore, he, he, he's a free thinker. So as a result, you know, we, we moved on. Of course, we had a lot of challenges is that, you know, to build it in a city uh, like Dubai, density is an issue, customer is an issue price point is, is an issue. But to start any business, you have these issues that you have to deal with as, as you move on. But we definitely knew that we have a, a first class site uh, in, uh, in our hand uh, to do it. Now, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just look at my note a little bit. Um, So the, the, the ability to, to move quickly with, with, uh, with the team and, uh, and, and do the competition and, and, and mix it right and everybody wants to do the hotel up and bring the hotel down for efficiency because efficiency was a challenge for all of us. How to design this building very, very tall but absolute maximum efficiency. We are a public company. We don't do buildings just for the sake of the chairman likes tall buildings. That doesn't exist in our company. And if you want to know how it works, please we invite you to our annual general meeting for our shareholders and you will see how tough these boys are. Um, because, so numbers have to make sense. So I must say that we were very lucky that we were able to achieve uh, with our team good density uh, and efficiency. Uh, I think the mix was really perfect that we took the hotel to the bottom, we put in the condos on top of that, um, and then we put the offices all the way uh, at the top. And then the other challenge was that you know, we wanted a hotel in the building, but we wanted something very special. We want something that the world have not seen. So it took us two years of negotiating with Mr. Giorgio Armani for us to achieve not only a tall building, but you know, a hotel that's very unique. So being tall, everybody's going to talk about. The challenges of, of how to do it, everybody's going to share with you that. But I really think that one of the things that I'm very passionate about is that how to build this building respecting the human spirit, respecting the city we live in, respecting our customer, and respecting quality as well in what we do. And by doing that, I think we want to make sure that if the next guy want, want to build something taller than this, and I'm sure there'll be people who will build something taller, I think our quality and our respect for humanity must stand out. So we are about four months late. Why? Because we keep rejecting our first mock-up of our first apartment. The customer doesn't know what we are going through, but we are rejecting every single item. We will not allow any customer to move in in any of these apartments or offices unless it's absolutely the best quality available to man. Otherwise, I will resign as the chairman of the company. I don't think it's about tall building. I think about, it's about pride. If somebody give me the chance to build one of the tallest structures in the world, I would, like to, I would like to embody quality in that, all type of quality. If it's the amenities, if it's the, uh, it's, it's the friendly environment issues, if it's quality of material used, I think when you get a chance like that once in a lifetime, I think you have to do the best that you can. So therefore, that is where the concentration on, on, on our side is going in. Of course, uh, engineering is challenge, uh, construction is challenge, pumping cement, uh, concrete, all the way to the 156th floor is, is a challenge at the same temperature, moving people up and down and feeding them and, I don't know, taking them to the toilet. I mean, leave alone structure and complexity of all that. But, you know, one of the things that we talk about, and, and, and I think Alia spoke to you about this, 
I said, you know, let's have our meetings about how does the pizza man deliver the pizza to my house? You know how complicated it is? How can the pizza guy deliver the pizza to the house? You build it, you put people in there, but that's what it's all about, right? Can the pizza guy get me my pizza quickly while still warm, keeping in mind access, security, you name it. So there's a lot of work going on into the business of the pizza man, which I think is, is something critical for, for all of us. Um, one of the other challenges we had, uh, and, and you know, we had a debate in the past uh, with some big speakers like uh, Giuliani in town, is that you know, we in the Middle East, we live in a tough neighborhood. So for you to have a, a sizable project like this and be able to make it profitable, we, you know, we are not in New York, we are not in Chicago. We don't have very nice neighbors. So we don't have, I mean, I was saying that in New York, everything is booming, everything is good because you've got Boston as a neighbor, you've got New Jersey as a neighbor, you've got Washington DC as your neighbor. So you know, there's a scale, there's business, and there's prosperity. Over here, you know, I always say that we are the source of the bad news for the world. We've got Pakistan, our neighbors, we've got Iran, we've got Iraq, thank God, we've got uh, the Palestinian Israelis killing each other. And in the middle of all this, we have to have hope. We have to have hope that we will do well because that's all we need. So when you look at the challenge around us and for us to say there is a city that will make it, that will grow, that will have respect for the human life and dream and execute, I really think that you know, we all have to thank His Highness for his ability to motivate us to say, forget about what you have around you. Move on in, in, your, in your development and in your work. And I think, you know, as well, this building is very emotional building for all of us in the Middle East because we also in the Middle East, we are tired of bad stories. You know, CNN and BBC, I always say that they'll go bust, they'll go out of business if the Middle East doesn't exist because we're the source of the news. And news is only bad news. Nobody enjoys good news. So the story is that we need a successful story for this region as well. So, and I'm glad personally and, and, and my team that we participate in creating good, optimistic stories about growth, about success. So at least now you can see now there's a lot of uh, Middle Eastern uh, cities are also enjoying that prosperity and progress and hope to move, uh, to move uh, forward. Um, but I must say that, you know, without, without really the, the team that exists uh, in the company and outside the company, uh, Adrian, uh, our colleagues from SOM, you've got, a, you've got, you've got what, 45 consultants uh, on the job. You've got a contractor that's doing a fabulous job, uh, subcontractors who are doing a great job. Uh, the city who have been really very, very supportive in, in, in what we do, we cannot achieve what, we are, what we're talking about uh, Today. So it's, it's really a wonderful opportunity to be able uh, to do this. Um, but just imagine for all of us you know, how much learning uh, we've all gained from this. How many mistakes we made and, and we were able to, uh, to look at situations and, and uh, get the team to look at them and, and, and relearn. And I really hope that as we move forward, I hope that with all of our great ideas we had and, and horrible mistakes we had, that we can participate and, and, and support somebody else who's going to build a tall structure. Because I think it's, it's our duty as well to share knowledge and share experience uh, in other parts of the world uh, as somebody energetic and, and optimistic uh, decide to go a little taller than us. And so we'll have to go and support them and, and help them out. And if they allow us to invest with them, we'll also welcome the opportunity to. Uh, at the end, I would like to uh, say uh, that I'm really grateful for all of you uh, coming to the conference. And I thank you again for choosing the city of Dubai to, uh, to host the conference. And I'm, I'm truly honored to be able to come and talk to you this morning. Thank you so much.